The explosion of violence and unrest we've watched in the United States this past week is sadly nothing new. And no one knows that better than the Reverend Jesse Jackson. These days, he's America's most revered civil rights leader. In the 1960s, he walked alongside Dr. Martin Luther King and tragically witnessed his assassination. In the 1980s, Reverend Jackson twice ran for the presidency. He was unsuccessful, but you can't help wondering what the United States would be like today if he had been elected. Liam Bartlett has been speaking with Jesse Jackson. I may be poor, I may be poor. but I am, I am. somebody. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Many of you have given up on being first-class citizens. Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Reverend. Thank you very much for your time tonight. I know your time is being asked for by literally thousands of people in your own country. But were you a priority? We're very grateful in Australia because you're a very important voice in this whole debate. What was it about the killing of George Floyd that has so inflamed the nation? Floyd was lynched. It was on live television and live real time. He touched something deep in the hearts of people around the world. Floyd begging for life. Police on his neck, on his knee on his neck for eight minutes and 56 seconds. The whole world saw it. He touched something profound within us. Have you been surprised by the size and the scale of the reaction around the world? Yes, and I'm, I'm, I'm delighted. When you were a young firebrand and you were fighting those disgraceful policies of segregation and division, what you wouldn't have given for a mobile phone camera, I suspect? The difference has been the camera, because if, if that young lady had not pulled out her camera, we would never have known Floyd was killed. They, they, they would have lied. Matter of fact, they, they lied even with the camera rolling. The, the report was different than what happened. The police have, have immunity and they have, they're, they're really innocent to proven guilty. But the camera more and more is making, making public the, their behavior. Because I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. You were there when Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated in 1968. You were right there. You witnessed the aftermath. I asked him, I said, Dr. King, do you hear me? And he didn't say anything, and I tried to, to hold his head. I mean, how do the riots and the protests in the wake of Dr. King's killing compare to what we've seen over the past week? So Dr. King was killed. He was not that popular. He became popular April 5th, the day after he was killed. And so, but we, we've grown a lot since then. America's changing fundamentally. I think Trump may be misreading the spirit of America. He's, he's stoked the fires of fear among many whites. Oh boy, oh boy. Here we go. Oh, oh my God. How much of the public outpouring of anger and frustration is a result of a lack of leadership. A lot of it. Well, Trump has shown no, no sympathy toward the victim of the lynching. That, that would have been common. The victim of the lynching? The victim of the lynching. He, he, he showed no sympathy toward him. Reverend, you ran for president twice back in the 80s. If you had won, would the country look any different today? Well, yes, it would, it, would, it would look different today. America is in such a deep hole, a racial divide and class divide. We've not decided yet to become one society. And I think that sometimes the success of black athletes puts a, a face on America. America sees blacks dominating the Olympics and football and basketball and baseball and track and tennis and, and golf. That's a veneer. I hear what you're saying. When you look at America, what you see is not what you get. Unless you have fair rules, you do not have fair outcomes. How many more George Floyds do we have to see 
killed before we see real change in your country? Difficult to say, you know, America is a, is a strange mix of hope and hopelessness, and the killing of innocent blacks is another dimension of justice. Barack Obama is urging people to educate themselves on how to vote and get out there and vote come November. He says that will solve this problem to a certain extent. Do you agree with that? It will solve many problems. We're the most jailed nation on earth. We're the most violent nation on earth. Blacks being jailed and put in, has, has been a part of America's story. My concern now is that we have a moment in time to, to discuss anew the agenda. And because it's coming to election time, it's a good time to solidify these positions and conventions. You think a different president will make a significant difference? Since it's a different climate, uh, di different a a a a a a expectations. We, we, we will have a fairly anti crime legislation. We will we, we win that battle. So, in some sense, I, I accept the challenges before us. I'm, I'm more optimistic about the future, frankly. Thanks very much, Reverend. Really appreciate it. God bless you. Because deep in my heart, I do believe that we shall overcome someday. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.